on my fellow lads today, Saints, Ken D. Rachel here. Yeah, as you saw by the intro there, Tom and Jerry's back! <laughs> oh, so good to have Tom and Jerry back on this channel after what's been beggar's belief nearly four months. It will just be the one episode today, but rest assured, I will get two episodes back up when I can because I've got so much to do on my channel now. I've got Music Mondays, I've got Rocket League, I've got reactions, I've got something to do on the Thursday, I've got my podcast, I've got F1 videos to do. F1 career mode is going to be up tomorrow for the 1000th F1 race. I'll be uh, talking about that when I get to it. Nevertheless, let's focus on Tom and Jerry tonight. This is episode 40. And it is called Hatch Up Your Troubles. A play on Pack Up Your Troubles. But nevertheless, usual rules apply. The sin glasses are on. The sin hat is on. Let's get started. Oh man, it's been so long since I've done this. Stop buzz killing us and give us the theme song that we know and the theme song that we love! Seriously, d since when did Jerry decide to lay an egg? Also, um, he's knitting a shirt. Shouldn't he be knitting a jumper? Because that's what's normally knitted. See, take notes, Jerry. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Just checking that. Yep, yeah, looks good to me. Why would you check on your egg? Oh, look at the time. I need to get going. Why would you need to go? You're supposed to be keeping an eye on your egg. Okay, fair play. Sin off. Very clever. Ten minutes. Each episode of Tom and Jerry doesn't even last ten minutes. Oh boy, the egg is about to hatch as the mother f flies away. Where have I seen that before? Pretty much every cartoon involving a mother with baby egg ever. Ah, the good old unrealistic physics. Spider webs do not do that! And apart from that, the egg would be stuck in that spider web, or, worst case scenario, it would have the silk, whatever it's called, wrapped around the egg, meaning it would not hatch properly. Are they even aware of how sticky these spider webs are? Mm, that sounds more like guitar strings breaking, which leads us on to the unrealistic sound design. My goodness me, two running gags, and we haven't even properly got underway yet. We're just over a minute into the episode, and we've already got two running gags back up and running. My word, how I've missed doing this. Right, few things wrong with that. Number one, I find that it's very convenient to have uh, the inside of a flower just big enough to fit the egg inside and the unrealistic physics kicking in for two. Very convenient to have that leaf just so it can roll down it like a ramp. It wouldn't roll in a straight line because of the shape of an egg, which leads to more unrealistic physics. And number three, the egg wouldn't be able to roll to the point where it manages to open the door. And four, how convenient to have Jerry sleeping in what seems to be the equivalent of a discount nest from what we just saw at the beginning of the episode. What is going on with this world? Um, no, Jerry, you should be feeling that. But because the plot demands it, he doesn't feel it until it goes kick, kick onto his back. See what I mean? <sighs> really? Innuendos in 1940s cartoons? No!
You clearly saw the egg beneath you. Why would you need to feel it? Oh dear, more unrealistic sound design for crying out loud. You... How on earth am I supposed to describe that? That sounds like hitting a metallic sideboard rather than actually trying to hatch out of an egg. First person baby sees after hatching and they think it's their mother, cliche. Number one, Jerry is not a female. And number two, why do they have this cliche to begin with? You would only make that reaction after you see uh, something you like. You would need to turn around and see something. Ooh, look at this glass. I like this glass. That's how it's supposed to be done! Could the beak be any stronger? Also, uh, that would result in a trip to the vet for Jerry. Also, three sins on for property damage. Oh, and another thing. It stopped as if it was an engine just dying. No, just no. Oh, jeez, calm down. Take it easy. My arm! My arm! Nope! No, he wouldn't be able to peck that stool down as quickly as that. Also, Jerry, did you not see the property damage he did earlier? What was so difficult about just simply turning around rather than bringing the stool behind you? All you had to do was turn yourself around and sit on the stool. There you go! Problem solved! Why do I point out these logic gaps? Walking in time to the music cliche. Yeah, when's the last time I brought that up? Oh wait, never. That's the first time I've actually done it. I'm guilty for walking in time to my music as well. I'm guilty for that. Character A sneaking up behind character B. Character B looks round. Character A is hiding cliche. Um, no, that's not how you would react. Ahooga! That's how you react! Um, no. You would need to peck the bottom half as well. Also, Jerry, you might need to get that door fixed. Jerry is a bully to the baby woodpecker. Tom is a bigger bully to the baby woodpecker. Fake explosion on point of impact cliche. Jerry, 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 Jerry! Mm, no, just no, because Jerry is smaller than Tom. Therefore, Tom, all, ha all Tom has to do is just go zzzz. What is so difficult about that? Oh, the cute little baby. Wait a minute. We interrupt this episode of Tom and Jerry to bring you the javelin event in the Olympics. How fast can he peck? No, Tom wouldn't be able to do that. Now, if... If that were actually possible, Tom's organs would be ruined.
Suddenly, Tom becomes a colander. His beak wouldn't be strong enough to peck through the teeth. And thus demonstrating the value of watching where you're going. That's headache number one. Headache number two. And headache number three. Mm, no, that wouldn't work. Okay, how did Jerry wake up? Since when did he get so good at this? Right, hang on, how, do, okay, how does he know how far he is away from Tom and Jerry? Second, how does he know how high the pole is? Number three, how is he so good at uh, maths and equations? And number four, how does he know which spot to precisely peck down? Oh, I know, because the plot demands it! Nine wax onto the head, nine sins. Double that because that would not be possible. Because Tom is not a spring. They left approximately five minutes ago. That's half of how long they said it would take. So therefore, five sins. Okay, baby woodpecker, make your mind up. Is the mama woodpecker your mother or is Jerry your mother? Make your bloomin' mind up! Now, I get it she's not aware baby woodpecker can fly, but come on, surely the baby woodpecker would be able to fly up by themselves without mama woodpecker holding baby woodpecker in their arms. See what I mean? No! Double the sin count for that! And one last thing, we do not know where it was made. Details, Quimby! They are important! My goodness me, how I've missed doing that. Couple of bloopers there. Haven't missed a beat. So, there we go. That does it for tonight, folks. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Light of Days Notification Squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. My podcast from yesterday is on the left. My Tom and Jerry Sins playlist is on the right. Man, it feels so good to have Tom and Jerry back. Formula One tomorrow. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. And as always, stay faithful. Stay tuned as well for the blooper reel. First person baby sees thinks it's... <sighs> character sneaks up behind other character and... Fake gunshot on... Nope.